All right, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. Today's topic is supply and demand analysis. This is a real basic issue. It's kind of the blocking and tackling of, of economics. Um, seeing what happens to the market equilibrium when factors affect supply and demand. So let's assume a particular market. Let's talk about the market for neck scarves. All right, so we will measure the price is the typical price of a net scarf, neck scarf, and the quantity is the amount, let's say, that's sold in an average month. Okay, and we'll draw supply, we'll draw demand, and remember, I'm not going to crowd the diagram, but remember we're going to have a market equilibrium price over here. When we and we can read the market equilibrium quantity down on the quantity axis. Okay, so let's look at some exercises that we could, could have. Say, what happens to the price and the quantity if? So, for example, if the weather is unusually warm. So, what, <coughs> what do we think happens if the we weather is unusually warm? Maybe people won't want as many neck scarves. So what we do is we shift the demand to the left because demand is decreasing. So we're saying demand decreases which means in any in a decrease or an increase of any okay a decrease of either demand or supply would shift shift things to the left well demand shifts demand to the left supply shifts supply to the left so demand decrease shifts supply so it shifts the demand curve left so we draw a new one typically with a dashed line, we'll call that D1 or D prime. And what has happened to the, okay, and then we move along the supply curve. So the equilibrium goes from here down to here. And so this is our new equilibrium, and we'll call that P prime our new equilibrium quantity, Q prime. So the net result is to reduce the price of next neck scarves and reduce the quantity traded of neck scarves. So that's <coughs> the impact of a drop in demand caused by unusually warm weather. Let's do another possibility. Let's say Um, somebody develops a, a more efficient machine for producing net, neck scarves. What happens there? Well, that affects willingness to supply at any price. In fact, so, so a more efficient machine to make neck scarves shift supply to the right. How many P's do I need? Probably not three. Shifts supply to the right. So we take the supply curve <coughs> and we draw a parallel to it to the right, we call that S prime, and now we have a new equilibrium P prime, Q prime. So the price has gone down from the original intersection, and the quantity, I'm going to put down for a down arrow for down, and the quantity has gone up because we've moved to the right in terms of quantity. So we've moved along the demand curve like this. So there's a distinction 
that we make in doing this analysis between demand and the quantity demanded. In this example, demand stayed the same because the demand curve did not shift. So we say the demand in this example stayed the same. The quantity demanded, however, increased because of the supply shift. So it's important to remember this. So demand, as in the expression of the demand curve, stayed the same. The quantity demanded increased because of the su supply shift, or because of the price down, which in turn was because of the supply shift. Because of the supply shift. All right, let's do <coughs> one more example. Let's suppose a movie star uh, in a movie, in a popular movie, wears a neck scarf in such a way that it makes lots of uh, fans of the movie star want to ha wear neck scarves. Okay, that would be an increase in demand. So we would have a D prime, so movie star gets fans to wear scarves, get this <coughs> shift in demand, and we get a price that's higher than the original equilibrium and a quantity that's higher than the original equilibrium. So I'll say that the price goes up, quantity goes up, and in terms of we, we can talk about supply versus quantity supplied. Okay, supply stays the same in this example. That is, we have not shifted the supply curve, but the quantity supplied goes up due to the increase in demand. So just as there is a distinction between demand and the quantity demanded, there is a distinction between supply and the quantity supplied. And that's important. The other important thing is to say that in this ex in these supply and demand analysis, we cannot talk about, well, what happens when the price of scarves goes up. Uh, that's <coughs> um, because the price of scarves is kind of fixed, is in the graph itself, or in the diagram itself. It is, so we don't talk about what happens when it goes up. We have to talk about what caused the price to go up. Was it a, a decrease in supply or an increase in demand? Um, and I think I'll stop there.